Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. It's time for that weekly mod collection demo shop update. Alright, let's see how festive they were this week. They did a couple of interesting ones that we'll talk about, but as far as glitches this week, for the first three minutes, only two of the new ones loaded in this section, and then you just had the four leftover ones. So we'll start things off with the Custom Shop 356 in Cerulean Cherry Mist. This is a pretty interesting model. It looks to me like they took a cherry red 356 and then just sprayed blue over top of it. So it's kind of got that whole widowed effect, but it looks like this might change colors at certain angles. Like it might become a little bit more blue and hide the red a bit more. It's not my favorite finish they've ever done, but it's interesting with the super flame top. But of course you get a matching headstock and it looks like they did the same blue overspray over everything for the back as well. However, I've never realized this until now. It's got a blue stinger. <laughs> I just thought that was like the uh, changing of the angles and whatnot. Okay, that has another cool feature to it. But the next one is a 335 called Luminous Orchid. Now that's a nice spooky name. It looks like it's kind of a similar theme where maybe it was a different finish before and then they just kind of oversprayed it with red. But yeah, it appears they left the back alone. But then you get these plastic red rings and the gold hardware. No matching headstock this time, but you do get a, like a brass truss rod cover. However, to be fair, they weren't asking any premium. I think they're actually giving you a discount, so it doesn't surprise me it's old. But now check out this Les Paul tribute. It's called Honey Hive. Now, I actually had the idea to create a Queen Bee Les Paul custom at one point in time, but it got kind of too crazy like my signature guitar and it got denied. <laughs> so it was nice to see a bee influenced thing, but you got some honeycombs on it. I mean, maybe if you're a beekeeper, that's pretty cool. And then you flip it over to the back and it's also black. However, you scroll up the neck and it's like, oh, okay. I'm not gonna say it's my favorite design in the world, but I love the fact they did something. Something to make it a little bit more exciting. Even the logo is a little bit extra orange. But it looks like it might have a golden edge to it. And it is awesome. I didn't see that at first. It kind of looks like binding, but it's not. And they gave you a hard shell case, so that wasn't too bad if you liked bees. But check this out, an SG Special with racing stripes. $27.99, that was kind of expensive for an SG Special. But zooming in here, you can see it's an ebony finish. It's got a Firebird pickup and a mini humbucker surround. And then, okay, they routed it out for a humbucker. That's supposed to be a Dirty Fingers pickup, so that's going to be pretty hot. We no longer have a pickguard on here due to the refinish, and it looks like it is a full gloss finish, so that's nice. They didn't mess around with our wrap tail piece at all, but you just have these racing stripes on here. But when I first saw this, I was like, that kind of looks like a Firebird, you know, their whole neck through design. Now, obviously, this has way too many stripes but then imagine my surprise we flip it over to the back there's a giant firebird on it <laughs> it's it was probably the coolest one this week just because it was so unexpected and yet i was thinking firebirds when i saw this design and there just happens to be a giant one on the back and hey it looks like we got a red stinger on here with some extra lines too Maybe it's just the angle of this photo, but everything else pops so much more than the top on this one. Whoever did that, I will applaud you. It was, it was fascinating. That's one I would have to display backwards. But check out this classic, an evil scarlet burst. Kind of looks like they took a slash vermilion and just modified it. But it looks like we have the top hat knobs that are just red. They look like kill switches from far away, but when you zoom in, you can kind of tell what they are. I did have somebody send me photos. But the uncovered black pickups with the striking red pickup rings. It looks pretty nice. Looks like the headstock was left alone besides a satin refin. And nice, it is a full-on refinish job and it looks like we got the tortoise shell back plates here. So let's look at it this way. You got a $200 discount, you got a burst paint job on the back, and it's a player-friendly satin finish. That was a good purchase. Next up, we have a 64 Trini Lopez standard reissue. At first glance here, I just thought, okay, it's black and we've got some sort of an armrest on it. But you zoom in here and oh, that's not a black finish, my friends. It's very similar to the Brunswick Blue Sparkle. Except for this time, they called it Bewitching Blue Sparkle. So, let's just say, Trini Lopez <laughs> with a Bigsby and the arm guard and all this other good stuff. Yeah, that's a nice one. Could have made it even better with one of those old style Gibson logos, but it doesn't look like they did that this week. And it is a full gloss refin. I'm curious, did this one sell? 6100? No, it's still available. These high-end electric Spanish guitars usually take a little bit longer to sell, but a brand new one of these guys is 6400. So the fact you're technically getting a discount and all the other special features, you would think it would sell quicker. Next up, a red 335 figured. This one's actually a pretty decent discount. Looks like you got the HP style knobs and other appointments. The style of the guitar just looks naked without a pickguard though, in my opinion, but the back's pretty nice. This was kind of a funny one. 
What would you have named this one, being that it's, you know, October spooky season? Would you name it A, Pumpkin Burst, B, Pumpkin Pie Burst, C, Burnt Peanut Brittle, or D, Grilled Cheese Burst? If you answered Grilled Cheese Burst, you're correct. I mean, I can kind of see it. A lot of people have those dark edges on their grilled cheese sandwiches, and you know, it's kind of a, a off yellowish orange color. But I like the way this finish matches your Gibson logos up here. And it's just a regular studio, so being 1900 bucks is a bit expensive, but at least they continued the burst job on the back. You got it on the headstock, and you have a full-on perimeter burst on the back. Next up for the lefties is a standard 60s. They called it bluegrass burst. It's kind of a, a bluish green burst color. It's nice. It's got a decent flame top, clear knobs, clear dark blue rings, no Les Paul model silk screen, and matching clear back plates. This was just 335 week in general. Here's a gold one with aged hardware, but what is going on here? It's almost like it's got one of the Brian Ray conversion stop bar wrap tail pieces put on it. I wonder what that's about. Oh my goodness, it is. Has this thing been repackaged? Was it originally a wrap tail that was like a custom order and they didn't think people would buy it? Come on, you guys should've just left it be the wrap tail, but it might actually be convertible if that is what I think it could potentially be. So in that case, that's really awesome. The back is a matching double gold. There's a 60 standard where they called it hot coal burst. It honestly doesn't look that different from what they currently offer as like a tri-burst through Guitar Center. But hey, okay, I take that back. The back has an interesting red and black burst hue. So okay, I dig that one a little bit more now. But how about this Les Paul Studio being called Pelham Blue? Well, it looks like a satin finish to me, so it looks more so like a tribute. And the back is black. Then you just had a straight up satin tribute in the ebony finish that you rightfully just skipped right over on launch day. However, if you actually look through all the photos, you'll see it's kind of cool. It's got an orange neck slash age natural, whatever you want to call it. And then there was one of the access customs in satin bangle burst this time. Is that why it looks so different? It just seems a lot darker than it normally is. I would say it's a dark, dark, dark maroon color because that's not full on black, at least not the way it comes across on my monitor. And then they had this weird special double cut in blue stone mist. I really just don't understand what, what was this model? We ran into this a week or two ago when I thought it was one of the Rick Beatos, but now it's looking like one of those special tributes that had like the big pick guard on it that's been converted, but those things didn't have binding on it. I mean, the serial number puts it close to Beato, but yeah, it's got a Bigsby and cream plastics, but this has a really cool dark blue into an aqua blue finish, but it's already gone. And lastly, there was a 68 reissue custom. And besides changing the pickups and stuff, it wasn't that spectacular. But whoa, eight and a half pounds, not a bad weight. So quite candidly, this week, not the best. But I vaguely remember last year being the same. They had like two great weeks during October and then kind of a meh. And then they really knocked our socks off the last week. So I'll remain hopeful. Demo shop time. A couple of cool guitars in here. Start off with the Silver Burst. Haven't seen one of these things before. Nah, just kidding. Made it to the demo shop because somehow the black finish just chipped off the edge of it. This Les Paul Tribute Satin was at 1099. It's got some decent wood grain. But then when you flip it over to the back, I'm sure this is just overexposure on the camera, but the neck just looked obnoxiously bright. And you can actually see a little bit of flame figuring too. But what's up with this strange Les Paul? I saw it had a Floyd Rose. We got two humbuckers, but our pick guard is, it's like somebody just cut it right here for no apparent reason. But hey, I guess they're just using up parts. But then when I flipped it over to the back, it's an access, it's an access standard. You just don't see these as often as the access customs anymore. But that was listed at 3,800. Then we had a custom color here called Black Cherry Burst. It's pretty spooky with your voodoo pickups, tortoiseshell pickguard, all blacked out hardware, and then the back is a pure gloss. And then hey, we haven't seen one of these things in a while. We're missing two knobs. They've got dirty fingers in the bridge positions. They have a covered neck pickup and an uncovered one over here. They put a vibrola on it. It would have been even more hilarious had they put that over here. It's like the Steve Clark Def Leppard k versions. But nobody wants to do it on the 12-string side. I wonder why. And then, yeah, they just left the back alone. I gotta read the description on this one. So they're saying master volume, master tone. I can't tell. Did they just cap those off with like a dummy knob? I'm not so sure about that one. I mean, if you go to Gibson's website, it's like eight grand to buy one of these things brand new. You're much better off going on the used market. I mean, here you save almost $2,000. And as far as the things that sold very quickly, we had this Tribute Satin in Amber Honey Burst. I saw this one and I was like, meh, 
It's kind of like that grilled cheese one, didn't do too much for me. But every photo that passes, you're gonna like it even more. So this one, you can see, all right, they put the old Gibson logo on it. Now granted, it's not very centered, but okay. But then you flip it over to the back and nice, I like that. It's like a, it's like a sweet tea sunrise neck. Imagine if they would have painted the fretboard like that. That would be cool. And then there was a trans black Les Paul standard. You don't see these things too often. I think Guitar Center might be coming out with a new traditional Pro 5 that looks similar to this for the Halloween season, but I have not seen the official announcement yet. But this is a older model, early 2019, before the switch of management. And now, the European demo shop. Really only two good ones to talk about. There was a fantastic deal on an SG Modern at 1550, including taxes and shipping and everything. Hard to beat that. Ooh, and it's one of the early ones too, because it has the locking Grover tuners yet. That was a fantastic price, but it looks like they're back to using the giant demo stamp again. They had weaned away from that, but that's what this shop started life as back, I think, eight months ago or so. But then look at this thing. How is this still here? Come on, European side guys. 14 hours and this hasn't sold. It's an SG Custom in Ebony. And I love, 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 love these guys' honesty. Not only do they do the nice candid photos that we talk about all the time, but it says not custom shop. Now that could be because somebody bought it and then asked for it to be refunded because they realized it wasn't a custom shop. But you guys know exactly what this is. It's a Captain Kirk Douglas SG. You can check them out in this review and demo. These guys just put a new pick guard on, got rid of the middle pickup, took the captain plate away, and called it a day. But I've got to say, it looks fantastic. Ebony 68 style customs are just good. So I think those were 2,500 brand new. However, they were constantly selling between 3,000 and 3,500 on the used market, let alone in the Netherlands. I mean, this is still a steal and a half. The only thing that would have made me more proud of them is if they actually would have said this is an X Captain Kirk Douglas model, but I can kind of see why they don't because you're taking the artist's signature from the artist and yeah, <laughs> gets a little bit hairy. But anyway, Stroglodytes, I hope you enjoyed this week's recap. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.